The price of renewable energy has been going down so fast, very few people actually understand what's been happening. The human brain can't really picture this. In 2023, 81% of new renewable power capacity was more cost effective than fossil fuel alternatives. In 2025, 99% of renewable generation is more cost effective than fossil fuel alternatives. Here is a chart mapping the stratospheric cost declines in renewable energy over the past 10 years. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. Great to have you with us. Visual Capitalists says that in 2023, 81% of new renewable power capacity was more cost effective than fossil fuel alternatives. But that number has drastically changed in 2025. This follows Wright's law, which observes that technology costs fall as production stalls. This follows Wright's law, which observes that technology costs fall as production scales, a trend playing out in green energy today. The gra this graphic shows the cost of renewable, renewable energy over the past decade based on data from IRENA via Our World in Data. In the table, you can see uh, how green energy sources have witnessed double digit cost declines in 10 years. Solar PV energy is now 75% cheaper than in 2014. But this doesn't actually account for the fact that efficiency on each panel has drastically increased. In fact, it's almost doubled during that space of time. So actually the price is much lower than what it appears here. As costs have become increasingly favorable and as also solar panels now last around twice as long as they used to in 2014, Installed solar capacity is growing by about twofold every three years. In 2025, an estimated $450 billion in investment is projected to go towards solar energy worldwide alone. In 2026, that number will be closer to $700 billion. Meanwhile, the cost of onshore wind has fallen by 62.3% and offshore wind by 60%. This is the part, I guess, that kind of surprised me a little bit because I, I didn't know that offshore wind and onshore wind prices, had come, I, I knew it had come down. I just had no idea how far the price of both onshore and offshore wind have fallen as well. Over the decade, capacity has similarly boomed as wind turbines have grown bigger and therefore become more and more efficient. In this way, larger blades produce wind power more efficiently, driving down costs and requiring fewer turbines. Together, falling costs and rapid capacity growth are strengthening the case for a shift away from fossil fuels. Big tech is among those leading the charge, pouring billions into data centers where potent energy is projected to account for 40% of new power capacity. We're hearing a lot in the news that these data centers are going to be powered by coal power plants or nuclear power plants. That's actually not the case. Almost all of them are actually powered by renewable energy. And the key reason is because it's much cheaper than nuclear power. Now, guys, unfortunately, this chart here doesn't show you the falling cost up until now. It only shows you until 2023. However, the cost of renewables, including wind and solar, has, has come down by approximately a further 35 to 40% depending on the technology. Wind has come down by about 35%. Solar power has come down by about 45% in the past two years. So these figures now, if you extrapolate to 2025, actually show you that the cost of renewables has, has drastically fallen almost every single year. At this point in time, it really is completely illogical to install anything but renewables anywhere on the planet. Now, I know that sounds wild. People think, well... What about in places where there's no sun and no wind? But keep in mind that 90% of the world, world's population actually lives on the sun belt. And the, the other 10%, well, they're actually pretty windy places. So guys, let me know your thoughts on this in the comments. Thanks for watching. The media has been talking about how India is building coal power plants. However, coal and gas power both declined by the largest rate 
in more than 30 years in India in May. Now, why is this happening? Well, one thing, renewable energy. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Michael Barnard writes for Clean Technica that um, India's energy landscape is at a pivotal crossroads exemplified by the recent decline in coal and gas-powered generation. In May 2025, there was the steepest year-over-year -year drop since COVID-19. Now, obviously, COVID-19 was an anomaly. Everything shut down. So actually, it was the steepest drop technically outside of that anomaly of COVID-19 in the last 30 years. The rapid contraction in coal usage attributed to an amalgamation of economic slowdowns, surging renewable deployment, and increasingly cost-competitive solar and wind projects, along with batteries, suggesting that India is hitting a tipping point towards substantial decarbonisation. Coal remains deeply embedded within India's power sector, but that is changing. And these developments underscore a trajectory toward a cleaner, more sustainable, and economically resilient energy system. Now, it's worth pointing out that India is a very, very sunny country. And yes, it is building massive amounts of solar power, but it has a, an enormous population of 1.3 billion people. And as a result, in 2023, the last full year for which we have uh, good, accurate data, India's energy was basically derived from fossil dependent sources like coal, crude oil, and natural gas. They dominated. Coal in particular underpinned nearly half of the total energy input, fueling India's industrial powerhouse sectors such as steel, cement, and power generation. The inefficiencies associated with coal-fired electricity generation were profound, and the pollution as well, with roughly two-thirds of coal's primary energy content dissipating into the atmosphere as pure waste heat. This loss was not just an environmental concern, but a significant economic and resource inefficiency, driving a compelling argument for transitioning towards more efficient and sustainable energy sources. And considering India's, um, its weather having so much sun, it just makes more sense for India to move towards solar. The rest of India's energy mix in 2023 presented a complex blend of traditional biomass oil-based fuels and natural gas, alongside growing but still modest contributions from renewables like wind, solar, and hydro. Despite aggressive policy ambitions for renewable expansion, renewables comprised less than a quarter of electricity generation, highlighting the enormous challenge that is still in front ahead for India.